Hi, this is Hitman SOS, and this is a complete set of WWF Hasbro figures. Okay, so starting naturally with Series 1, the first figure is Hulk Hogan with Gorilla Press Slam. Next, we have the Ultimate Warrior with Warrior Slam. Uh, Warrior Smash, should I say. Okay, next we have Andre the Giant with Giant Joat. It's a headbutt. Although I've never had the problem myself, this figure does um, tend to, um, you know, I've seen other people with uh, this figure and then it kind of, uh, the springy action does kind of um, break and, uh, you know, just kind of uh, wobbles around. Okay, next we have... <coughs> Axe with Axe Attack. It's just a Gorilla Press Slam, basically. Next, we have Smash with uh, Demolition Smasher, as they call it. He's got the windy arm punch. So, a common problem with this, it doesn't um, kind of stop where it's supposed to. You know, if you keep winding it up, it'll eventually go around and start back where it started <clears throat> okay so here we have uh, Ravishing Rick Rude with Rude Awakening Headlock so uh, he has his arm positioned like this you can put another figure's head in there and then uh, punch the crap out of them Okay, uh, next we got Ra Metro Man Randy Savage with um, Elbow Smash. So this is a kind of common action for uh, quite a lot of the figures. Okay, we got Akeem with... Uh, they call this body slam, but um, it's just a headbutt, just like the Andre figure. I think I think this and Andre they are the only two figures that have this action. So um, yeah, like I say, they call it body slam, but um, yeah, this isn't um, that's not a body slam. Okay, uh, big boss man with hard time slam. So he comes with the uh, the nightstick. So he basically does the same action as um, Randy Savage, but you know he holds the nightstick, so you can hit other guys with the nightstick. Okay, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. This was actually the first Hasbro figure I ever owned, and um, he does the windy arm punch just like Smash. Uh, they call this the million dollar punch and he comes with the uh, the million dollar belt as well okay Jake the snake Roberts with uh, Damien and he does the Python punch so he's basically got a springy arm there so um, I will say that uh, you know, my three-year-old daughter, she likes to kind of play around with my Hasbro sometimes. And I got Tito Santana, which is the same body as this, does the same action. And I basically picked it up like a few weeks ago to show my daughter like what he does, you know. And his, uh, Tito Santana's arm fell off. So, uh, any Hasbro collectors out there, you should be, uh, extra careful with your figures. Try not to play with them too much like I do and my daughter. Okay, and the last figure in the WWF Hasbro Series 1 is Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And he does, uh, they call it the sleeper hold, but he does this, uh, the springy jump thing. So, um, comes with his shears, um, 
I mean, they call his move the sleeper hold, so his arm is kind of positioned in such a way that he can't do a sleeper hold. <coughs> Which I believe the sleeper hold was actually his finish move, so... Um, okay, so that's WWF Hasbro Series 1. Okay, Series 2, so we got another Hulk Hogan with a <coughs> Hulkster Hug. So it's kind of a bear hug. <clears throat> um, I will say that this, I think, is the only figure that actually does this action. So, um, yeah, obviously it's a unique body. So we got the old warrior with Ultimate Slam, a Gorilla Press. So he is wearing the uh, belt. This belt doesn't come with him. You can only get this belt with the uh, with the wrestling ring, you know. Um, I did buy a few of these belts, like loose off eBay, just so I can put them on some of the figures. A uh, common problem with this figure as well, he usually more often than not has like a brown nose, like the paint comes off his nose for some reason really easily. But it, so it took me a while to like find one that uh, doesn't have paint missing off his nose. Okay, we got Honky Tonk Man with Rattle and Roll. Comes with uh, comes with the, his guitar accessory. So I will say that um, a lot of the figures that come with weapons, this is kind of a typical action for those. You know, obviously it makes sense for them to be able to hit their opponents over the head with their uh, accessory. Okay, next we got Dusty Rhodes. So this figure is famous for being like a, a really rare figure. You know, they kind of um, they were recalled after Dusty Rhodes left the company. So I noticed that this figure always has a a very loose arm, which um, I think they may have done that on purpose because I think he used to do this thing where he swings his arm round and then he would uh, kind of headbutt his opponent. So he's got his hand in position as well for a headbutt. Um, so, uh, they call this move the Dust Buster. There is actually a rare variant of this figure as well, where he has yellow boots as opposed to white, which was uh, one of the uh, SummerSlam re-releases. <clears throat> okay, so we got Rowdy Roddy Piper with Piper Punch. spinning arm punch. As you can see, it doesn't stop where it's supposed to stop. It keeps going round until eventually it will be back where it started. There we go. So Rowdy Roddy Piper. Okay, next we got Superfly Jimmy Snooker with Superfly Slam. Which he does the uh, springy jump thing. Okay, so this has always been one of my favorite Hasbro figures. I don't know why, probably just because it looks cool with his crown and his scepter and everything. You know, he's got the uh, removable crown accessory and uh, the scepter in his hand. And uh, he does the. Uh, the Macho Match Masher, as um, Hasbro called it. Macho Man on the back of his trunks there. Uh, Macho King, should I say. So, cool figure. One of my, one of my favorite Hasbros, I guess. Okay, next we got Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Comes with his 2x4 accessory. And he does the what they call the Hack Attack. And we got another version of the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and he does this uh, stump thing. They call it the Million Dollar Stump. He lifts his arm up, his uh, leg raises up, and he can stomp on his opponent. And he comes with the uh, he comes with the same uh, Million Dollar Belt that the uh, the first Million Dollar Man came with. 
Okay, so series two, we saw the addition of uh, tag team uh, two packs. So here we have the Bushwhackers. So we got uh, we got Butch. Um, I always forget which one's which. I think this one's Butch. So he does the uh, he does the stomp as well, just like Million Dollar Man. And they call that the uh, Down and Out Blaster. And here we have, I think it's Luke. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And this is the Down Under Pounder. So the thing I always liked about this move was that the Bushwhackers, when they entered the ring, they always used to do something like this when they were walking to the ring. You know, and everybody in the crowd would kind of do the same thing. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of cool, you know. <clears throat> okay, so next we've got another Tag Team 2-pack. It's, uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty as the Rockers. So we got, uh, Shawn Michaels does the Rocker Shocker, which, again, is the springy jump thing, just like, uh, Superfly and the Elmer Warrior. And Marty Jannetty does, um, to look at the figure you'd think he'd do the same thing, but he doesn't. He does this thing where you lift up his legs, uh, you lift up his arm and his legs kind of go in, so he can do like a, kind of a drop kick thing. Uh, they call it the Rocker Dropper. So I'm not sure, but I think Marty Jannetty's the only figure that actually does that move. I don't think they ever used that on any other character. Okay, and the last figures from Series 2 is another Tag Team 2-pack, and with this time we got uh, Smash and Crush uh, Demolition, and this time they come with the helmets, so um, exactly the same Smash that was in Series 1, um, which kind of pissed me off as a kid because I didn't want to get this 2-pack because I already had Smash, even though they come with the helmets and looked awesome, um, but I did really want Crush, so... You know, it kind of pissed me off that um, I didn't really get have Crush because I didn't really want to buy another Smash. So um, Crush has the, they call it the Crush Cruncher, which is, uh, you know, the clothesline move. And Smash, just like in Series 1, he has the uh, Demolition Smasher, as uh, Hasbro call it. So that's all of... Um, that's all of series two. Okay, so series three, we have Hulk Hogan with Hulkaplex. So the way this works, you're supposed to put like uh, another figure's head um, under his right arm, and then you wind his arm up, let it go, and he's supposed to drop on the floor and kind of do almost like a DDT type of thing to the other figure, you know. Um, it doesn't really work all that well, but, you know, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it works. It does something. Okay, so next we got the, uh, the third open warrior. So this is, uh, he does a warrior wham. This is the first figure that does this move. You push down on his head, you know, the feet kind of push in and the arms, uh, move. So, um, very much, uh... You know, this move kind of suits the Elmer Warrior, you know. So. So, kind of cool. I always kind of like this Elmer Warrior. Okay, so next we got the second version of uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, which I think is a great improvement over the, the first one. Same head as the first one, but the body looks much better. He does, uh, this move is called the Flat Top. So, it's basically just a windy arm punch so this one's actually really powerful as well if you was to put your finger there it would hurt like hell and he comes with the uh, shears with the black handle as opposed to the the red like the previous figure okay next we got Greg the Hammer Valentine with um, Hammer Slammer, as they call it, which is basically this clothesline move.
So Greg Valentine and uh, Brutus Beefcake were actually previously a, a, a tag team earlier on in WWF. Okay, we've got Earthquake with, uh, they call this uh, Aftershock. So basically he does this thing, um, but his legs do move, unlike most Hasbro figures. He has some articulation there on his leg. And I think with this figure, the what you were supposed to do is kind of like a leg drop. You kind of lift his arms up, and he does kind of like a like a leg drop type of thing on his opponent. Okay, next we got Typhoon with uh, they call this the tidal wave. Which um, is exactly the same as Earthquake. He's got exactly the same body, just a repaint. Um, it's basically a repaint of Earthquake with Typhoon's head. So he does the same thing, you know, you bend his legs and you make him do this kind of uh, like a leg drop type thing or some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of drop onto, you know, their opponent. Okay, we got Sergeant Slaughter with Sergeant Salute. I always liked this figure when I was a kid. I thought it was a pretty good likeness of Sergeant Slaughter as well. Okay, Macho Man with Macho Masher. So, um, when I was a kid, I definitely didn't have this figure. I mean, I already had Macho King, which um, I always thought it sucked that they re-released the same figure without any accessories. It's just it's just Macho King with no accessories from uh, you know, from series 2, I think it was. Uh, the only difference is it does say man on his butt as opposed to king. It's got Macho Man as opposed to Macho King, but yeah, I mean, the fact that he come with no accessories um, yeah, never really liked this figure, you know, it just sucked. Re-release of the same figure with no accessories. Okay, we got Mr. Perfect with Perfect Plex. So Perfect Plex was actually Mr. Perfect's, uh, finish move, which, um, just like Hulk Hogan, you're supposed to stick, like, an opponent's head in there, wind his arm up, let it go, and he does, uh, like a suplex type thing. In fact, what the hell, I'm going to try it, see how it works. So oh, got Macho Man in there. Wind his arm up. Okay, so, yeah, it didn't work too too well, but, yeah, that's uh, Mr. Perfect with the uh, Perfect Plex. Okay, here we got Coco Beware. This has always been, uh, you know, one of my favorite Hasbro figures, you know. I always like Coco Beware. Um, you know, very good colorful type of character always makes good action figures and he does Birdman bounce you know springy jump obviously comes with Frankie you know what would Coco beware be without Frankie so cool figure always like this one I always remember uh, picking this one up in the store my brother I picked up like the last one and my brother was like walking around the store like begging me to let me him have it you know, and um, I didn't let him have it. I just kept it for myself. Okay, next we got Texas Tornado with uh, Texas Twister. So um, you kind of wind him up, let him go, and he uh, spins round in this kind of uh, helicopter motion or a tornado motion, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, the first figure that had that move. Okay, and the last figure in uh, Series 3 is uh, the Big Boss Man with Jailhouse Jam, which is basically basically the, uh, the clothesline move. It does come with his nightstick. Um, I will say that this figure is like really notorious for breaking off there. You know, this part of the arm where it joins together it does break real easily. Me and my two brothers had this figure when we were kids, and I think... All three of ours broke. You know, this is actually one that I picked up more recently off eBay a few years ago because mine was broken. Okay, so that was series three. 
Okay, so here we have Series 4, Undertaker. This is the, um, I guess this is the very first Undertaker action figure there ever was. You know, there's probably about a hundred Undertaker action figures now. And he does the Tombstone Tackle, which is, uh, basically the clothesline. Next we have Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and he does Steamboat Springer, which is a springy jump thing. And he does have, uh, he does come with this uh, kind of removable, uh, you know, dragon wings. Okay, next we got Bret Hart with the. Uh, they call this heart attack. So I think I think he's supposed to like uh, you know you're supposed to put like the your know, the opponent's head under his arm and uh, you wind the arm up and he drops back. You know. And here we have the same figure, but this is the purple heart version. If you look, this is the uh, standard version with the pink heart, and this is the. Uh, I believe this is a mail away figure with the purple heart. So um, the purple heart does cost a lot more to get hold of than the pink heart. But personally, I wouldn't really recommend paying a lot more money for a figure just because the heart is um, a slightly different shade. Uh, and I will say that I actually got this figure kind of cheap because there is like a small hairline crack there on his. Uh, chest but it's actually really very unnoticeable so um, that's the only reason I have this one <clears throat> okay next we got the British Bulldog David Boy Smith and he does the Bulldog Bash which is basically the uh, Gorilla Press Slam and as you can see his arms are moving down really slow he's like still really stiff like as if he's like brand new or something so, um, yeah, I was always a big fan of the British Bulldog when I was a kid. I thought it was awesome. <clears throat> okay, so we got a tag team now, a two-pack. Um, Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal. I loved the Legion of Doom when I was a kid. thought they were awesome. So you got a Hawk. Hawk does Hawk attack. I'm going to be gentle with this figure. And you got Animal who does the Doomsday. -er which is the Gorilla Press Slam. So the reason I want to be careful with these is because these little uh, stumps that they have, which are supposed to represent the spikes that they used to wear, um, they actually break off real easily. You know, my two brothers had these same figures as well, and um, I will say that my two brothers, like, they had, like, various uh, spikes broken off their figures, but I was lucky enough to never have that problem. Okay, and the last figures in Series 4 that I'm going to show you is uh, the Nasty Boys, Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sags. So, Nobbs does the Nasty Sizer, which is basically the, uh, the clothesline, and Jerry Sags does the Punk Pounder. And I just done Domino Rally with the figures, but what the hell. As you can see as well with Sags, his arms are actually a different shade to the rest of his body. That's because his uh, chest area is kind of painted, whereas uh, his arms are like, uh, just kind of like skin colored plastic, so uh, the two tones don't match. But whatever, so that's Series 4. So, Series 5, so this is the, uh, this is the fourth and final Hulk Hogan figure. And he does Hulkster Slam, which is basically the uh, the springy punch thing, the Jake the Snake punch, if you will. So, um, yeah, it's not really a slam, it's a punch. But um, obviously the belt didn't come with him. This is the belt that comes with the uh, the ring. It's just the one that I bought off eBay that I slapped on him. So, yeah, this is the first Hulk Hogan where he's not actually wearing a vest or shirt, whatever. Okay, we got uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage with a uh, Savage Slam, as they call it. 
does the springy jump thing. Okay, we've got Jim the Anvil Nightheart with Anvil Flatner. So I will say that this version of Jim the Anvil Nightheart is um this is the new foundation. So obviously when Bret Hart broke off and went on his own, um Jim Nightheart teamed up with Owen Hart and they became the new foundation. But um they didn't do Owen Hart until like uh, a couple of series after this, which was kinda strange. So we got one half of the new foundation here, and Owen Hart is uh, yet to come, and this is uh, like say Anvil Flatner, it's the, uh, the um, you know, the clothesline thing. Okay, we got Big Sid, Sid Justice with the, they call this the power bomb, but this, um, it's uh, you know, it's a griddle press slam move. Which, um, yeah, mine's not working all that well. His arms seem to separate kind of easy. But, um, yeah, I guess you can, uh, I guess you can do a power bomb with this, you know. If you position another figure, you know, you, I guess you can make him do a power bomb. Okay, this is Skinner. So, I always like this figure, you know. Um, Skinner was just kind of a mid-card guy, uh, probably not even a mid-card guy, I don't even remember seeing him wrestle with uh, Jabba's, you know. He was played by um, Steve Kern, who was one half, half of the Fabulous Ones, who were a pretty good tag team like back in the early 80s. And he does the Gator Breaker, which is, uh, you know, like the third old warrior where... You know, you push down and he, uh, I don't know, just his arms just go, kind of go crazy. So, yeah, I always like this figure. Okay, we've got the Mountie with Mountie Mash. So, he does the typical, because he comes with a weapon, he does the typical kind of weapon move. So, you know, he's got all his entrance gear on as well. So Rick Martel with Arrogant Splash. And we got Virgil with Bodyguard Bash. So he does the springy arm thing as well. So um, yeah, he was always um, a million dollar man's uh, bodyguard. Next, we got the Warlord with uh, Warlord Wham. I always liked this figure. I always thought Warlord was kind of cool, although um, he never really seemed to achieve a whole lot in uh, the WWF. You know, he's not really uh, not really that well remembered, I guess. And we got uh, IRS Mike Rotundo with the Right Off Slam. So, I don't know a damn thing about modern wrestling, but I know that uh, uh, two of IRS's sons are actually in the WWE now. I, I don't know what their names are. I think it's Bo Dallas and um, Bray Wyatt, I think. You know, current WWE stars, um, sons of IRS. So, that's the last figure in Series 5. Okay, here we have Series 6, Ric Flair. This is the one and only uh, WWF Hasbro Ric Flair. He does the, uh, the same move as uh, Ravishing Rick Rude, the headlock punch thing. And they call it Flair Snare. So, um, I always hated this figure. I just think it's uh, not a good likeness of Ric Flair. I hate, the, uh, I hate his face. Just, um... Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't look anything like Ric Flair to me. Okay, next we got Papa Shungo with the Spellbinder. So he does the springy punch thing. So 
So I always thought it was kind of strange that he has this little peg on his necklace where he can hold it in his hand because you would think that he's supposed to have it around his neck. But um, I don't know, I guess it's cool he can hold it in his hand, you know. So yeah, that's Papa Shango. <clears throat> Next we got uh, Al Matador with uh, Bullseye Bash. You know, he's got Jake the Snake's body, he does this springy punch thing. Um, like I said earlier, um, you know, my daughter likes to play around with my Hasbro sometimes, and I just kind of picked up Al Matador and shoot my daughter what he does, like, you know, like, you know, and his, uh, his arm, uh, his arm came off, came flying off, so I had to, like, buy another one of these off of eBay, so, um, yeah, be careful with your Hasbros, look after them. Okay, we got Repo Man with, uh, Robber Clava. He does the springy jump. So, just in case anybody out there didn't know, um, Repo Man is actually the same guy who played, uh, Smash from Demolition. Barry Dosso, his name. So, next we got Tatanka, who, um... Does the uh, the windy uh, you know the Texas tornado thing, um, and they call it the tomahawk tackle. So um, him and uh, Texas tornado, I think, are the only two guys who do this move. And this is the last figure in series six. There's only six figures in series six. This is Berserker. Um, I always loved this figure, you know, although Berserker was, uh, you know, not a particularly great, um, wrestler or anything like that, you know, he was, uh, another one of those guys who only ever seemed to, like, wrestle against jobbers, um, you know, his figures always look cool, you know, so, um, this is the, uh, Berserker Bash, so as you can see, he's got, uh, Hexo Jim Duggan's body, he's got the, uh, hand there, which can hold the 2x4, so that's the last figure from series six and series six is actually the last of the uh the neon blue card um figures uh after this series they started giving the the cards like different colors okay this is series seven um yellow card series this is kimono with uh kimono crush it's the spinny uh, the springy jump thing um, I will say that uh, Hasbro kind of made a little bit of a mistake with this figure. He's got like the two stars on his chest and then he's got like another star on his stomach. But um, <clears throat> if you remember Kamada, he always had a moon painted on his stomach. So um, they did actually do a variant of this figure with a moon on his stomach, but it's very rare, very expensive. Um, I'm assuming that they made these figures and then they realized they made a mistake and so like the last few That they made they kind of corrected it with the moon. So um, yeah, the moon belly is very rare very expensive and um, Personally, I wouldn't want to pay all that extra money just to have like a moon painted on the stomach <clears throat> Okay, here we have Owen Hart with the rocket blast uh, so it's just the, uh, it's the, uh, the, you know, the clothesline. Um, so this is the, uh, the Owen Hart that goes with the Jim the Anvil Neuhart that I showed you earlier. Uh, the other half of, uh, the new foundation. Which, uh, we're a pretty cool tag team, although they're not really, um, in this day and age, kind of, um, considered like a classic, memorable tag team, but I did like them at the time. Okay, here we have Kona Crush. So um, he does the, uh, they call it the Kona Crusher. So he's another one of them guys who does the, uh, you know, he's got like the, you know, you put like another figure's head in there, wind his arm up, and he's supposed to kind of fall back, I guess, and do like a DDT suplex type thing, whatever it is.
Okay, next we have Nails. This is the one and only Nails action figure that there has ever been and quite possibly ever will be. He does the jailhouse jab, which is the windy punch thing. Yeah. Um, just in case anybody out there doesn't know, I know that um, Nails kind of had a little bit of a dispute with Vince McMahon about the amount he was getting paid. And um, he ended up beating up Vince McMahon in his office, and uh, obviously he got fired, and that was it. That was the end of Nails. Okay, next we have Razor Ramon. I have two Razor Ramons here because um, this is uh, this is basically the figure that was released in uh, basically everywhere all over the world. You know, USA and and Europe and anywhere else that has these things with the gold chains. But then you've got the Indian Fun School version, which has the uh, the copper chains. So um, although exactly the same figure, um, the only difference is. Uh, you know, the Indian version has the copper chains, um, but the copper chains are a lot more rarer, a lot more expensive to get hold of. So, um, I mean, I have this because I was able to pick it up off eBay at a pretty decent price. So, um, yeah, and this is the gold chains. I mean, the gold chains do look better. It's just for some reason, um, the Indian version has the copper chains which is a lot rarer a lot more harder to get hold of so it's a lot more expensive okay and the last figure from series 7 yellow card series is uh, Shawn Michaels and um, he does the conceited crunch um, by the way uh, Razor Ramon's move is called the Razor Rage he does uh, you know the obviously the clothesline thing so, um, yeah, that's the Shawn Michaels, the last figure from Series 7, Yellow Card Series. Okay, this is, um, Series 8, Red Card Series. This is Bam Bam Bigelow with, uh, Bam Bam Slam. So he basically just does the, uh, you know, that thing. He does have the, uh, articulation on his legs, just like, uh, Earthquake and Typhoon. So you can make him do, like, the, uh... Some kind of leg drop type thing or something. So yeah, that's uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Okay, we got Yokozuna with a uh, Sumo Smash. We got Lex Luger. This is uh, the Narcissist Lex Luger with the uh, Narcissistic Knockout, which is basically a Gorilla Press Slam. And as you can see, I'm kind of struggling to do it because his arm keeps going up. It works okay when I lift it up with this arm. Okay, we got Mr. Perfect. This is um, this is just a, a straight repaint of the previous Mr. Perfect. Um, the other one was uh, you know exactly the same, but he had the solid yellow uh, singlet. This one's like blue with the uh, yellow bit on the back. So the move, same move, Perfect Plex. You know, you put some other figure's head in there, wind it up. He kind of falls backwards and does a supposed to be a perfect plex you know more like a DDT okay we got Bret Hart this is just a, a repaint of the previous Bret Hart um, he does uh, the move is called the heart attack just like the previous figure again just like Mr. Perfect I think you're supposed to stick another head figure's head in there kind of wind his arm up falls backwards you know, I will say this one, this one does have a bit more detail to it than the previous Bret Hart figure. So, um, although just a repaint, it's quite a nice repaint. And then we got 
This is uh, exactly the same as the previous Undertaker figure, which um, obviously there are some slight paint differences. This one's got kind of brown hair as opposed to the the orange hair. And the previous figure, he kind of has like what they call eyeshadow under his eyes, whereas this one, uh, you know, he doesn't have the eyeshadow. And obviously, this one comes with his entrance jacket as well, which is which is really cool because you never see things like this when the Hasbro figures very rarely do you see any entrance gear so yeah I do really like this figure and uh, this is also quite a rare one to get hold of as well and he does the uh, tombstone tackle just like the previous figure you know the uh, um, you know the clothesline thing so that's the last figure from series 8 red card series Okay, this is Series 9, Purple Card Series. So we got Rick Steiner with a Steiner Slam. So he does the, uh, you know, the uh, clothesline thing. And then we got St Scott Steiner with Steiner Suplex. So he does the, uh, he does the kind of, uh, you know, the Mr. Perfect style, Perfect Plex thing, you know, put the head in there and let him drop back. So, um... Yeah, I always loved these figures when I was a kid. Um, I always found it quite interesting to see WWF Steiner Brothers as well because I always associated them more with WCW. You know, I used to watch WCW and WWF when I was a kid. So, um, Steiners weren't in WWF for very long, but it, it's cool that uh, I had a WWF Hasbro figures of them. So, we got Doink the Clown with... Uh, Big top clobber, he does the windy arm punch thing. So, I always like this figure as well because he has like the real hair, you know, the fuzzy hair. So, kind of unique to Hasbro. <clears throat> Tatanka, for some reason, gets a re release. This is exactly the same as the previous Tatanka that we already had. Does the, uh, Tomahawk tackle, you know, the uh, Texas tornado thing. Okay, we got a new million dollar man, uh, Ted DiBiase with million dollar mash. You know, does the springy punch thing. So, kind of cool to have him in his wrestling gear because when you're a kid, it's kind of uh, annoying when you have to, like, uh, play with the figures with their entrance gear you know what I mean so it's kind of cool that he's like wearing his wrestling trunks and we got uh, a second uh, version of Hacksaw Jim Duggan it comes with the American flag accessory he doesn't actually come with the 2x4 accessory this is a spare one that I had that I gave him so um, I think it's like He's virtually the same as the old figure, just the repaint. Obviously, he's wearing like the vest, you know. So, um, kind of sucks to have Hexel without the 2x4. So, you know, I had to get an extra 2x4 for him to have. So, that's the last figure from uh, Series 9, Purple Card Series. Okay, this is Series 10, the Dark Blue Card Series. This is Giant Gonzalez with a giant jab. <clears throat> so he does the, uh, you know, the kind of push down, you know, push down on his feet and, uh, you know, his arms go crazy. So, um, yeah, this is quite a cool figure, you know, Giant Gonzalez. He was the uh, tallest wrestler of all time, like seven foot seven or something like that, I think he was. Okay, so here we have Marty Jannetty in his singles attire with a uh, Jannetty jam. So, you know, he does the this thing. So, quite a cool figure, you know. Marty Jannetty wasn't around for very long after the Rockets split up. Okay, here we have the Head Shrinkers. These were, um,. Tag team, but um, you know they were uh, single carded figures. So we have uh, Samu with uh, Samu Shaka, which is the springy jump thing. 
and we have uh, Fatu, who uh, more recently is better known as uh, Rikishi, and he has the Fatu flattener, so he has the same springy jump thing. Okay, we have the Bushwhackers, so this is kind of a repaint of the previous version of Bushwhackers. Um, these two were uh, single carded figures again, um, whereas the first version were uh, a two pack. Uh, this time round they got the hats. So, um, and um, although these are repaints, they have switched the heads around, so um, Butch now has uh, what was Luke's body. Um, I think this is Luke, and uh, this is this is Butch with um, what was uh, Luke's body. So um, yeah, repaints with uh, the head switch around. So um, Luke now does the uh, the stump, which is uh, which they call the down and out blaster, which is um, the same name that uh, they had a. Uh, Butch's move in the previous version. <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> Butch with the down and under pounder. <clears throat> okay, so we got Shawn Michaels which um, was originally released in series 7 yellow card series so it's re-released same figure conceited crunch um, and uh, also um, there's this the repaint version which is um, <coughs> excuse me uh, same figure just a repaint so um, I don't know why they re-released this figure when they could have just done this figure but um, I don't have this figure loose I only have it mint on card so uh, I haven't opened it I do maybe I will open it one day I don't know it's quite a rare figure but like I say he does the same move conceited crunch has the same name so, like I say, same figure, repaint, has the black trunks. Um, I will say this one is actually a lot rarer and a lot more expensive to get hold of than the, uh, than the other version. And the same with Razor Ramon. This is exactly the same as the previous Razor Ramon from, uh, I think also from Series 7. Does the same move, the uh, Razor Rage, the uh, clothesline thing, and um, just like Shawn Michaels, they don't take the same figure in this series. This is um, this is a new repaint version with the purple, um, and again, just like Shawn Michaels, this version is a lot more rarer and more expensive to get hold of than uh, than the previous uh, version. So why the hell they uh, re-released the previous one and done a repaint in the same series? I don't know. It's kind of strange, but um, yeah, like I say, this one is um, yeah a lot more uh, rarer and expensive to get hold of than the than the other one. So um, yeah, and that's the last figure from uh, series ten. Okay, and this is the last series of the Hasbro figures. This is series 11. This is the rarest series of them all. Um, here we have Ludwig Borger. Um, I did used to have a loose Ludwig Borger, but I actually sold it. And I only have this one, which I haven't opened. So, um, it's Ludwig Borger. He does the Gorilla Press Slam move, which they call the, uh, the Finland finisher. So, um... He's obviously from Finland. Um, I believe he was quite a celebrity in Finland as well, although wrestling fans, uh, you know, don't really remember him all that well, you know. I mean, I remember him, but... So, yeah, I mean, we got uh, Ludwig Borger, 
like I say, still mint on card. Haven't opened it. Maybe I will open it sometime. I don't know. Yokozuna. This is a repaint of the previous Yokozuna that I, that I showed you. Um, just a different color. Uh, you know, his uh, uh, trunks, tights, whatever you want to call them, are a different color. Um, same move, sumo smash. Um, but this is uh, this is a much rarer and more expensive version of Yokozuna to get hold of than the previous version. Although it is just a straight repaint. So this is uh, this is quite possibly the rarest and most expensive figure out of the uh, series 11 figures to get hold of. So um, although this is the rarest series, I mean some of the uh, you know the series one and series two figures are actually a lot more expensive and rarer to find still mint on card but um yeah this is this is known as evil crush um i believe his move is the same the kona crusher it's, it is just a repaint of the previous crush although i do actually like this one a lot more so yeah very rare figure um quite a nice version of crush okay we got the one two three kid Sean Waltman, also known as uh, X Pac, um, he does the uh, the Ravishing Rick Root headlock punch thing, which is known as the one two three punch. So um, yeah, I mean the paint on this figure seems to rub off pretty easily. The the red paint, you know, the yellow is still on there, okay, but the red one two three is uh, disappearing. So yeah, this is one of the rarest figures as well. One of the more expensive figures to get hold of. Okay, we got Adam Baum. Who, um, you know, he's got, I think, Mr. Perfect's body. Does the Perfect Plex move. Um, they call it the Nuclear Knockout. So again, it's one of those figures where you put somebody's head in there, wind his arm up, he's supposed to fall back and give him some kind of suplex, DDT, whatever. So yeah, you know, pretty cool figure. Never was a big fan of Adam Bomb, but he's one of those guys where the figures, I think, always look pretty cool. Okay, we've got the smoking guns. We've got Billy Gun, which I still have mint on card. I never opened it. You know, I probably will open it at some point. And we've got Bart Gunn from the Smoking Gun. So Billy Gunn, Billy Gunn basically has Jake the Snake's body. So he does that springy punch thing uh, called the Cowboy Clobber, as you can see. And uh, we got Bart Gunn, who does the... Uh, clothesline move um, which they call the rodeo roundhouse and that's the very last of uh, all my WWF Hasbro figures that was a complete set of Hasbro's um, you know there are a few like uh, mail away exclusive figures that I don't have things like that but they're all repaints of figures that I showed you so um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video I hope it brought back some uh, happy childhood memories for you. So um, I would appreciate it if you liked the video and leave comments. And um, I just want to say thank you for watching.